Hi, Dr. Jerome Fryer. Just wanted to talk to you a little bit about hypermobility or instability. Um, they aren't. Uh, they aren't the same. Hypermobility can can be stable with regards to clinical signs and symptoms. Uh, so what I'm referring to is, you know, this is a model that I've crafted here, and you can see that this, well, you can't see actually, uh, you can feel that there is one segment that moves more than the other because this one's been created with half the stiffness. So when you move it, there's one vertebrae that moves more with respect to the other. And this is such a common source of back pain that often goes unrecognized. Um, and what happens is if one segment, well, this is kind of what we think is going on with regards to the literature. If a disc gets injured, one of these discs, there's a responsive uh, reaction that causes this joint to become more restricted, so tighter, um, increased stiffness. We don't know exactly why. Some people believe it's because of the natural intrinsic guarding of the muscles that cross the joint because it's in a protective state. Uh, some people think that it actually changes up the biomechanics within the discs themselves. Uh, some people believe because of the, the disc, if you get a little bit of an injury, the disc height goes down a bit and then there's interlocking of the facet joints. Irrespective of what the causes of the stiffness is, what happens is the adjacent segment above starts to become a little bit hypermobile. And that causes now, now maybe originally this was a pain generator, but now over time this has developed into a pain generator uh, because it moves around too much. There's shear forces. So when someone bends forward, these facet joints touch. Um, so now this segment is moving around too much. Uh, disc, when a disc gets injured, let's talk a little bit about that. That comes primarily from uh, fissures that occur from the inside of the annulus. And sometimes there is a disc protrusion Right? You can see kind of the redness that's presenting there. Or sometimes you get a frank disc herniation where you get, you can see the herniation where the nucleus actually comes out. Right? Right. This, back to the hypermobility component, this is such a common condition. I'll show you, there was a paper published in 2017. They did uh, video fluoroscopy. And what they revealed, and this is of the neck, but what they revealed was that uh, you can see that this is a, this, you know, this is all these vertebrae have been mapped out, and then they had the patient flex forward, and what they actually saw was this segment here, actually, you can see there's hypermobility. This is very often a pain generator right here, right? You can kind of see the break and this is called George's line here, a break in this, uh, the way these vertebrae are angled. But uh, very common to present in clinics. And this is where this model comes in handy because now if a patient can see what's going on with regards to their spine, they're going to be more, more motivated and compliant around stabilization exercise. You want to stabilize this joint so it doesn't wiggle around too much. Because with this model, what I've done is you can see the, the blue is the hyaline cartilage, right? Which is a, about 0.5 mil thick uh, tissue that doesn't have any blood vessels in it whatsoever, but it's kind of the protective covering because underneath the hyaline cartilage is the subchondral bone, which is where the nerves and uh, they sensitize the below the cartilage. Well, this at this level here, there's no blue. There's no cartilage. I've taken that out because what happens is this starts to rub the wrong way. And then osteoarthritis starts to develop over time, just like seen in this model, right? You can see the difference in the facet joints. Yeah. So, anyways, lots of neat stuff to explore when... These models are crafted and 
Now patients can clearly see what it means to have a hypermobile or an unstable motion segment.